My name is Kira Posachidi Hooker. I was born in Lvov in the Ukraine. My birthday is 2-22-22. It was wonderful. I was only a child. My father adored me. <laughs> and that was wherever he would go, I go alone. My mother was Ukrainian. My father was Greek. When they met, she couldn't speak Greek and he couldn't speak Ukrainian. But they fell in love and both of them spoke Russian. And then I took in school German and English and French. You have plans, you have dreams, you know what you're going to do. What, when you finish school, you will go to uh, higher school, college, and I wanted to be a doctor. So, but that did not realize. About 1939, well, the war was already on. Hitler was winning. They checked everyone's visa. My father's visa was from Greece. And so he was arrested in 1939 as enemy of the state and sent to Siberia. And we never seen my father again. Then shortly after that, German army came and took that territory. I was finishing high school and my mom went to see her sister to find us a place to live after I graduate. And I went to where my mother supposed to be, but she wasn't there. But I never did find my mother. Food was prime. You, you trade whatever you have, maybe go to some uh, farm or something and maybe they will trade you for something. Hitler, when he would conquer a, a large piece of land, he would collect all the Jews first and send them to concentration camps. And after that, they started collecting all the able bodies to work in Germany because their men were in, in a war. So they gathered all the able-bodied people and sent them to work in their factories or farms or mines or whatever you're able to do. They asked me what I can do. I, in home economics, I hemmed a handkerchief and, and made an apron, so I can sew. Yes, I can sew. <laughs> I was sent to a factory where they make German uniforms. They bring you into a camp and you don't know where you are. No, they don't tell you, this is so-and-so town and, and that's where you are. You just, later on, I kind of surmised I was in the area of Gross Schonau. They didn't have special clothes for us. You just have what you had that you could carry in your purse. I had a good job and I had three meals. For breakfast, a slice of bread. For noon, we'll have a bowl of soup or a baked potato. And at night, we'll have a slice of bread and that was the food. They would call me to the office to translate because I could speak five languages and they needed interpreter because we had people from all over Europe. Then I get maybe extra slice of bread and maybe a soup ladle and a half. <laughs> you know, that was my extra payoff, and that helped me survive. I think it's your hope that you have 
you are going to make it. I would go to the window that's about this size and look up in the sky and say, God, help me. Toward the end of the war, when Hitler was losing on all sides, they took all the guards and the dogs. Uh, they had to go to the front. They needed everyone. So our guards were old men and teenage boys. So we decided to, to escape. And we did successfully. And we walked three days and three nights. We want to go west into American army. They took pity on us, give each one of us a Hershey candy bar and put us on a bus to a safe place. And we ended up in Francisbad, Czechoslovakia.